Hey friends, hope you all having a great start of your Lent and uh, everybody had a great moment at Ash Wednesday recently. So we will begin our next lesson um, coming up this week, which will be on the covenant with Noah. Now again, I just want to remind you that this may seem kind of random in the middle of Lent as we begin this idea of the covenants this week and we'll cover Abraham next week, but it actually follows the liturgical calendar. So the readings from the first Sunday of Lent um, coming up will actually talk about the flood and Noah um, and God making a covenant with his people. And then the second reading will come from the letter of the first letter of Peter, where he talks about how the flood is a kind of prefiguration of us being saved through our baptisms. So the, 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 the formation topic is meant to connect to the liturgy somewhat each week. So as always, I encourage you to read this background information up here. It talks about a little bit about the lesson. And the lesson will begin right here with a short introduction about keeping promises. Um, it kind of goes through some ideas, some situations where people said they really wanted to keep a promise, but something prevented them from keeping that promise. Feel free to add anything else. You maybe share your own kind of story in life to your children to make it real to them, which will eventually lead up to this idea right here that reminds us that God never does that. God will always keep his promises and nothing will prevent God from um, staying true to what he said. Beginning right here will actually kind of be the story of Noah and the flood, um, kind of paraphrased from scripture. You can read this if you'd like. It begins here and continues on the next page and a little bit afterwards. You can read directly from the Bible if that seems fit for you or if you have another child story. Um, but just anything that you believe is age appropriate for your kiddos, right? For a kindergartner, it's going to be very different from a fourth grader on the story of Noah and the flood. So it begins right here and continues all the way through here, where you finish the story at the top right here. Um, down here, it's to be a really cool activity. I think I said a couple of neat things this, this week in the lesson. It's meant to be just a kind of a visual. So the idea here is to actually go out and take a tape measure, something you have along at home, something long, um, maybe some cones or something, and to actually go show your children how big the ark would have actually been. Um, scripture uses the measurement of a cubit. Um, the cubit wasn't actually a completely set measurement, depending on kind of what part of the world you're in. It ranged from anywhere from about a foot and a half or so, but it was a little bit different. So for this purposes, they're kind of rounding a cubit down to one foot and a half, 18 inches. So based on those kind of conversions, you can see that the arc was 450 feet long and 45 feet high and 75 feet wide which is pretty incredible how big it is. It would be kind of cool to take the kids outside and actually just kind of measure it out as much as you can to show, like, this is how big this, this boat would have been. It would have been incredible. Um, just think of a football field as 100 yards or just 300 feet. The arc was a football field and a half, so incredibly big. So really cool visual for them. And then finally, um, you're going to do this activity over here with your kids about God's promise to us. And this is a really neat activity. So it's going to utilize this guy right here where you can cut it out and you're going to make like a little treasure chest. Um, if you have some younger saints, you may want to do this before you um, get into the lesson or your older saints can do it themselves. Basically, you're going to cut it all out the outside and then you'll fold the dotted lines and glue them or tape them together to make like a little treasure chest. And the idea is that behind it, you'll have these little sheets of paper. And again, you'll need to cut these out individually. There's a couple pages. And these are all the promises that God has made to us um, throughout Scripture. And then you can put these inside of the treasure chest. And then every day over the next few months, it be a great Lenten practice, maybe during meal blessing, maybe nighttime prayer, um, pick a child to take one out and to read it and just and find solace um, in the promises that God has given us. And these are such wonderful things. And remind the children that God will always keep his promises. Um, so it's a really cool, beautiful little activity. And then as you continue the lesson, it kind of invites you to, to encourage your children, you know, when they when they pull a promise out that really speaks to them, something and they get, oh, man, that was really cool, or I really connect with that promise, to keep it. Um, maybe you can put it in their wall somewhere, just put it in their room, just put it anywhere, just, just to remind them of the wonderful things that God has promised us. And then finally, the last activity um, on the back page is maybe make you think of it for your older saints as well, but it's just a little chart. It's not really an activity, I guess. Sometimes you can talk about the kiddos. Um, that sometimes we can get in this habit of thinking the Old Testament is kind of like one version of God and the New Testament is like Jesus and a different version of God. Um, that's not true, right? The God, the Father, was present all throughout salvation history, and he's a good teacher. He has taught humanity slowly over time, revealing himself more and more until he, he came in the person of Jesus Christ. And the New Testament is what he said is hidden in the Old, and the Old Testament is fulfilled in the New. So there's so many things in the Old Testament that prefigure these important moments that happen in the New Testament. And that is exactly what the readings are about this weekend, the uh, first reading and the second reading, showing that through the floodwaters, um, humanity was saved and spared, and they came out um, cleansed and started anew, and like a lot of the sinfulness and the evil was washed away. Um, and that same thing happens to us in the sacrament of baptism, like we are saved through the waters and our evil and sin are washed away. So it's it's the flood was a prefigure of the salvation that we will get 
um, through the baptism instituted by Jesus Christ. And that is the message of the first and second readings this weekend. So you can read to that and show them these, just some, just some examples as many others of how the Old Testament is revealed in the New and the New Testament can be found hidden in the Old. Um, so hope you have a great lesson this week discussing Noah and the Covenant. And you'll notice that next week we'll continue this theme of the Covenant as we talk about Abraham, which will be the topic of the first reading for the second Sunday of Lent. Have a great week. God bless, guys. Bye.